So the sermon, more of a reflection, actually. Yeah. And if you think it's profitable, we can also talk about the Q&A he had at night. What are some highlights from the reflections in the morning? What I got out of it was um, the principles that John MacArthur st stood on that, you know, that um, teaching the, the truth and the, the Christ is the head of the church and is, he's not and it's not malleable. The church is the only institute the Lord ever built. Mm. Um, only expression, only earthly expression of heaven. In other words, it's, it's here, heaven, it's our heaven on earth right now. Mm. The closest we're going to have until we actually go there. Mm. Um, it's the source of divine truth. And it's a gathering of worshipers declaring his attributes and his nature and his and his works. I like the way how he finds comfort in the doctrine of election. You know, that he yeah, he, it'd be too, he said it would be too much pressure, yeah. If he felt like, oh, if he didn't if we talked to someone and didn't say the quite the right words and they ended up because of that, rejecting the gospel and ending up in hell, yeah. You know, it's not like we have to argue people by our own eloquence, our own cleverness. So we yeah, mm. be freed from that. It's the calling of the church to, the calling of the churches to submit to the mind of Christ. Mm. So <clears throat> also handling of the word of God accurately. Yep. And we're here to proclaim this truth, this gospel, until the king comes to reign. I was reminded how you treat another Christian is how we treat God. Mm, yeah. When Jesus talks about the least of these and what we did to the least of these, he, he's talking yeah. about the church, not just to every person on the planet. I, I like his comment. Was he said Bert, Bert Michelson is ninety four and sends uh, John more love notes than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, Burton Delorth. Founding members of Grace Church. Yeah. Bert built the main church building that we worship in today. Mm. The worship center. Uh, yeah. Was he the one who came up with the hydraulic pulpit? <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, I like he says people serve because their hearts are bursting with love for the people of God. And so mm. this is the product of sitting under the other. Oh, the, and the word of God is love. Yeah, the church of 900 ministers. Yeah. Right. I definitely see that in each of y'all. This is the mm -hmm. way you care for mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters. That came from hearing the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It made the truth continue to be our motivation for mm -hmm. living for yeah. him. So when we forget the gospel and start moving into doing things because we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And... We lose the right heart motive behind yeah. serving. Yeah. I, I like um, in the evening service, uh, Phil Johnson's uh, motivation for coming to hear John MacArthur the first time. Nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing was, yeah, that's something we can relate to. Yeah. Well, yeah, we could move into the Q&A. You see each of those core people. Mm -hmm. In Pastor John's life, Phil Johnson, <laughs> of grace to you. Who is the next one? Dr. Abner Chow of yeah. the Master University in the commentary. Then Nathan Buznitz, Dr. Buznitz for the seminary, and Mark Tatlock for a TMAI. Mm. Think about the influence God has given Grace Church to impact the world. Not just one church, but truly the whole world. Mm. Yeah. Michael, yeah. or uh, inspiring the way that like a lot of those minister, ministries, it wasn't so much that uh, John MacArthur was looking for them, but God just kind of provided for them, and he, you know, took the opportunity that was before him. Let's talk about each of those one one by one. So Pastor John and the church, he began preaching at many retreats and. Mm. Uh, especially found God's will if you haven't read that little booklet very rich on mm. how do you know what's God's will in your life and it comes down to 
if you're following God, turning away from sin, then really God's will is just anything that you desire because our hearts align with God's heart. And mm -hmm. Phil Johnson left this out yesterday, but he did mention before that, well, at the end of that message, he thought, well, I do want to pursue and marry Darlene. So it came to, it came to mm. become true. So wow. He found God's will there yeah. and became a faithful disciple of John MacArthur the rest of his life. <laughs> 41 years, man. I can't even tell Phil Johnson's like that much that old. <laughs> He's not old at all. Then grace to you. I wasn't so much impacted by this ministry initially, I think. But now when we prepare for our lessons, I always listen to Pastor John when I listen to different commentaries. He's my living commentary. Mm. What about y'all? How is that for, part for you? How were you impacted by grace to you? I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't yeah. for the app and my listening to all the all the different sermons, I would have never known that the church even existed. Mm. So mm. it was and it was through my brother that I found out about the the app. And he mm. lives on the East Coast. Oh wow. So it was mm. I, so he's the one that gave me, sent me the app, the link to the app, and then I started listening to it. Mm. <laughs> and then I, I, I think I've, I've said it many times. I didn't even know that the church even existed in California. I thought it was on the East Coast because that's where my brother sent it from. And mm. it wasn't until one day I heard an announcement about it being in Sun Valley, and I was like, Sun Valley. California I said where oh, so I looked on found out where it was I, and I was like oh that's here <laughs> so um it, it definitely had an impact on me hmm. indirectly too uh I I first knew about grace here listening to the resolve conferences my friend who was a student at the seminary at the time shared with me past recordings of Rick Holland's resolve conferences hmm. I think they were for the college students yeah. Very good stuff. Yeah, built around uh, Jonathan Edwards' 70 resolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think to some, I mean, I, I think to some extent, I mean, well, I, before I came to this church, I did, did listen to the, the um, sermons on tapes. Mm. Yeah, that was kind of how I heard, you know. And that's good. They gave everything free. We should never sell God's word in that sense. Yeah. Understandable. When you write a book and you need to... <laughs> pay for the time costs and then that's understandable printing costs yeah right. right to charge people for like preaching is it this does that make sense mm. what a goal huh that 100 years from now people would still be listening to mm -hmm. pastor john's sermon and i believe that's very true i mean we read spurgeon's commentaries today yeah right. we listen to dr lloyd jones mm -hmm. What about the university, the master's college, master's university? Any highlights from there? Or has that impacted y'all in any way? Well, it's impacted me. Yeah. Tell us about it. No, no I mean, I went, got a degree from there. Yeah. We did. That, that impacted me in that way. And, you know, it, it was kind of neat that the way it happened that he took over what was kind of a, what is, a a failing college, but it, it was failing, but it had good uh, doctrinal statement, and you just kind of you know, seize the opportunity there. And we're reminded to never compromise with the world. There is a scholarships, <laughs> government funding they decided to not take. Yeah, because the government twists twists your arm, water down your doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who was, who was some other, well, this is maybe with the seminary, but they were talking, I don't know if it was Fuller or something, where they said the problem was they, they decided to yeah, go for the world's respect, respectability, to be respected by the world and seen mm -hmm. high class by the world. And the only way they could do that is if they kind of watered down their doctrine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I wonder how that's something you can pay attention to day by day in our lives. How do we know when we're starting to slip away? 
that constant exposure to truth and the God's people mm, will yeah. keep us in check. Mm, yeah. We're called to proclaim the gospel to the world, but not to be in the world. Yeah. Right, right. Even uh, we started an Instagram page, our Bible study, and is that helpful? Is that something helpful or is it something that we're already moving away from truth? Mm, yeah. There's a lot of benefits to Instagram. I can see a lot of our friends posting. I can see a lot of bad things too on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I don't use Instagram, so I can't comment on it. Yeah, I don't use it either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not missing much. <laughs> That's for sure. I uh, deleted mine and then, I don't know, just because like you said, there's like, even if you're just trying to search something, there's like all kinds of like bad things on there. Like... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like more trouble than it's worth, but mm. I don't know. Mm. I reactivated it for some reason. I don't know. I don't really use it much <laughs> though. I followed the Bible study, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah, with that, we could get the truth out. That's what we're doing with our YouTube channel too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, my my chiropractor encouraged me to continue. Mm. <laughs> and. <laughs> Even if God used that to save one person. Don't want to comment it on your video, Neil. Uh, the same person oh, yeah. who asked about Yahweh. Yeah. Uh, just, mm. Yeah. Does breaking God's law mean what? I can't enter heaven or something? Or, or will God still accept me if I broke one law? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see that. Uh, yeah. it's uh, You can look up comments by like recent comments and you can just kind of scroll down to your videos. I respond to it myself, but okay. Yeah, you should respond to your video. <laughs> yeah, I'm like behind. I haven't even posted today yet, so I have to do that after after this. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's been good. Um, yeah, it, it's it's almost like yeah, how Pastor John had the opportunity to. You didn't even plan for the Grace to You ministry, and it just became what it was <laughs> through mm -hmm. other people posting his messages. So. Yeah, right. and I guess we're doing something similar, just getting the truth out to where people mm -hmm. are. If it's the radio in the past, today it's if it's YouTube Shorts and Instagram, then that might be the way to go to reach the unreached. I appreciate like how he wasn't really focused on like trying to market it, you know, yeah. like he had all kinds of people trying to tell him, "Oh, you need to do this or do that," and like create mm -hmm. a crisis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, he did. He purposely didn't do it just because, like, he wanted if it was going to be successful, he wanted it, you know, to be from God. You know, so I thought right. that was yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, like if God wants it to be successful, it's going to be successful. You know, yeah. And I mean, I don't know. One thing that struck me, guess this far, far out was. It? Both the humility of uh, Dr. Chow and Dr. Uh, Buzanid. Yeah, they're very accomplished. And yeah. They don't proclaim it. Yeah, right. Dr. Chow's 41? Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, so convicted, like, made me think, like, man, I didn't really do anything with my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <laughs> and Dr. Like, Cardi's 38, so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Some amazing. Yeah, but it's not about age. It's not about age. We have the same number of seconds starting now. Yeah. Until the Lord takes us home. It's a good thought. I never thought about it like that. Because usually, to be honest, I think like I think more about like regrets or I wish I think done things differently. You know, like I feel like I wasted years, and it's like you can't take them back. But there's no use dwelling on it. You know, it's not going to mm, help. Yeah. You can learn from it, but you know. But what's most important is, you know, using the time you have now. So, like King David, if he kept dwelling on his sins from the past, then mm. he wouldn't have been able to finish well. Though we could reflect on the past for to glorify God in the future, <laughs> even today. Mm. Why was Judah's story of his sins er earlier in his life recorded? It's to give glory to God. Why was Jonah's story recorded? He's probably the one who shared that story uh, of what God did. Our stories of failures. Uh, King Solomon, Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. recording his life failure, but mm -hmm. using that to 
encourage and to strengthen mm -hmm. those in the future. So it is, I mean, it is interesting. Is I wonder, were there any things that MacArthur started that didn't work out? I'm sure there were. Like, for whatever reason, I was in around when they had the grace school. Were you, Mark? Uh, yeah, I, I did. So for whatever reason, it stopped. Well, I, I, and I recall, I think they said it was just not financially viable. So, mm. so I guess mm. now, I guess the culture is changing. And well, and I think they said it, it was not financially viable and a lot of the people weren't even members of grade. So. Oh, I see. So, but I mean, it sounds like now that their school is more focused on people who go to grade. So. Yeah. It's same with our Bible study. I need to remember to focus on y'all and not to kind of be all over the place. Mm, yeah. I think the the culture is since COVID has really changed. So um, a lot of people are, are at least the school system, everybody's trying to get, get their kids educated, but not, mm. not in the way that the public schools are. They're, they're mm -hmm. failing. Mm. They're very lenient. And, and there's no backbone to the school anymore. They're not really learning. The kids aren't learning anymore. They're just babysitting. So a lot of parents don't realize that. So they want their kids to have an education. Mm. I think it, if it wasn't profitable in the past, that it'll be more profitable now. I mean, mm. because you have to pay, you know, teacher salary and what have you to make mm. it viable. Mm. So mm. And my, my next door neighbor, he's already he has his kids in private school he said he he was going to, he was thinking about putting him into public school and then he said no he's gonna he's going to keep them in private school because he doesn't want them to that that whole public school experience he's afraid they're not going to become educated so mm -hmm. yeah we're indoctrinated the public school way <laughs> yep yep can you imagine in probably half the time or less you could teach children much better at home school than the public right. school system yeah a lot that has booming been booming too because people are taking their kids out of the schools and decide i'll educate my kids because yeah. it's insane what's going on in the public school yeah Vody bakum says if you don't expect your children to worship god if they're getting taught by caesar Right. Mm. Yeah. Good to see you, Justin. Yeah. Well, good to be here, guys. What's the topic? Oh, we we're just going through the Q and A yesterday. Nice. Talking about the university, and now we'll switch over to talking about the seminar. This was the shortest of all the points I think he was sharing about, but very important. A seminary should be attached to a local church. Mm, yeah. That just it seems like a no brainer. If you're training doctors, you want them to practice in hospitals. If you're training teachers, you want them to practice in schools. So if you're training future pastors, mm. is it just in a classroom setting or in the real live church setting? 2,000 grads since they began. Yeah, he, yeah. Pastor John said that there's two things that he wanted to do when he came to Grace. It was to teach the Word of God, teach and preach the Word of God, and to train men how to teach and preach the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, and he and said something. Whatever... No, go ahead. I'll look some up. Uh, okay. Um, uh, like the Men of the Word Ministry that's been growing since Dr. Clausen took over in 2015. Mm -hmm. Our church is also growing and strengthening the lay people. Yeah, right. they already were, but they're always improving too. And yeah, that would want want to be my focus too, strengthening the lay people. Because they're the bulk of the church. Yeah. Right. And well, it's also, I mean, seminary students typically they're here for a, a few years and then they move on somewhere. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I know they tell me people, you know, who are in say, studies where the main shepherd is a uh, seminary student and it's like he's there for whatever. Yeah, maybe he starts when he's been in seminary two years, so he's got two years, one or two years leading the study, and then he 
takes the password in some other state and they need to find somebody else. I think I heard you say something, Josh, that, uh, well, the average lifespan, I heard you guys talking about this in the last study, <clears throat> the average uh, career span of a pastor is four years. Pastor John mm -hmm. spoke about that yesterday. And uh, yeah. I heard you say something in the last study, I think it was on Friday or Saturday, um, where you said that because pastors jump from place to place because where they get burnt out, uh, because they, 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 they talk about everything that they wanted to talk about and they run out of things to talk about. So they move to another church and, you know, they'll, they'll use those same uh, recycled sermons yeah. to a new congregation or they'll just fall out of ministry. And I think sometimes, at least my understanding in some churches or denominations, it's almost kind of like a corporate ladder, you know, you, you hmm. church with a thousand, say a hundred people, you know, when you just start and you do a good job there. And then there's some church with 500 people and look and see you and say, hey, we need a pastor. We'll increase your salary if you come uh, preach to us. And so they leave there. And then, you know, I mean, they hope that then there's a larger church and a larger church. And, you know. Yeah. So what's the motivation? <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. Pastor John always wanted to just stay at Grace Church, even mm -hmm. though he had opportunities to do other things. He quoted uh, 2 Timothy 2.2. You've heard me teach things that I've been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Mm. And he said his main motivation was to pass the baton to other men. And his quote was, whatever, shall con whatever small contribution I make to any of these ministries, it's putting the right people in place by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, mm. you know. And, and that's how you've seen the church been blessed uh, with laymen and other, you know, people in the ministries. Like when, when you, it's the, it's, it's the word of God going forth and mm, yeah. producing fruit in other people, the congregation mm. to be raised mm. up. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah. And masters was opened in 1986. Yep. The seminary. Yeah. Almost 40 years. Mm. The Spanish program is growing too so look forward to that in the future yeah Who now let's that? talk about team uh the seminar oh no the spanish the spanish mm, some of the of spanish masters professors yeah it still falls under the umbrella of master seminary but their training is in spanish mm -hmm. right i just thought you might know somebody's name because i had i i don't think i've said or, or seen or met any other than, you know, just other prisoners that speak Spanish. I mean, yeah. we went to, we had that sing along or that uh, some, we sang hymns that did that one Sunday. And yeah. I didn't even realize that was the Spanish church until someone mentioned it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's almost like their own church. Yeah. So there's a lot. They have what, 800 now? Wow. Mm. Mm. Josh, since you go to seminary, what would you say? How 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 fine is the comb that goes through the men with their purity and their pursuit for righteousness? Um, you know, I mean, because obviously many men have been disqualified in ministry. Uh, so going into seminary and having an inside perspective and view, uh, how 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 much emphasis is put on that to 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 produce men of purity of of, of holiness you know um have you seen others fall away i mean you know have you seen a lot of uh counseling or, or you know discipline in that mm -hmm. to produce good quality oh, yeah men? yeah i could think of dozens of men who began seminary and aren't here anymore so uh, some it, all for different reasons for for stopping seminary, but there were also those who disqualified themselves. Yeah, um, they they have discipleship labs. So every Thursday, it's like a seminary small group. We meet with a pastor and other seminary students and share life together. But the main accountability for myself and I'm sure for most of not all the seminary students is from their church. Because you have a seminary student do well in seminary and he could choose to be 
as, as accountable or not as accountable to others. So the same with here in our Bible study, we could be as transparent or not transparent with one another. Mm. You know, one of us could be in adultery and not tell anyone else until it becomes obvious. Mm. Uh, so in the end, it's up to us in, in seminary too. It's up to them how much they want to share. And But God has a way of revealing those things. If not now, he will reveal it later in their ministry. And mm. there, I heard there's a blacklist for our seminary, you know, for graduates who've gone apostate, who've disqualified themselves. So in church and seminary, you'll have wheat and tares, mm. but they do their best to, to, mm. to keep these students accountable. The scary thing, though, is like I know a man who very involved at church, a church leader and in the end, left his wife for another woman. So it could be the people who are most involved in that church. It is just, it's something we have to, all of us, each of us rely on God every day, living by grace alone. Mm. And to keep putting off sin, putting on righteousness by his strength. And he so said TMAI. that too. Yeah. Go ahead. He, he just said that to produce preachers and teachers that can handle the word of God, but also examine themselves. Yeah. I don't know if you're on already. I, I told the group here about the Instagram account and making it and just commenting how already so much garbage is on Instagram. So, so much just the things I shouldn't see. And, no, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's a war. Okay. I mean, well, I'm, I'm not on Instagram, but I'm on Facebook and it seems like there's a amount of that's just uh you know whatever a big waste of time you know like you know, do you keep what they do just sit and post about their cat or or something like that or there's you know, someone it seems like you know oh today i had you know uh beef with you know lima beans and here's a picture of it and here's the recipe and who cares yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what am I eating at, at 8 a.m., at 12 p.m., noon, at 6 p.m., evening? You know, what is my review of this food I ate on top of that, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, everything. Yeah, for coming firsthand, because I, I've had Instagram pretty much since it opened up, and um, I used to be a, a creator, so I have a little bit of a following. And then I used to be an actor, so uh, I gained uh, an audience uh, based on that. Um and, you know, we think about the old man, how, uh, you know, we leave that behind, you know, God creates us to be new and everything is passed away and all has become new. Um, so we have a certain level of control, right, within our life of what we surround ourselves with, what we yeah. put in our eye and enters our body and mind. <clears throat> but in Instagram, you know, you don't have any control over that um, because now they've integrated ads and then uh, recommendations and even though you don't even look at those things or have any interest in those topics, um, you know, when you scroll, because I use it primarily to stay connected with brothers and sisters uh, and to be encouraged and also to encourage mm -hmm. others uh, with what's happening in their life. But, you know, there's an aspect of, you know, the prince of the power of the air, right? And he owns this, this world. And that is just one of the many, uh, the, the many avenues of, you know, his control over mm. um, the the souls of people who seek their value and their status uh, and, and the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Mm. So, you know, you get recommended things, you see things that have no relation to anything that you even do. The algorithm is always trying to push uh, things that, that it wants you to see rather than, than what you have... Uh, <laughs> in your friends list, your family. So, you know, um, you know, God did not take us out of this world, but to keep us from the evil one. And um, it's a battle that it is a war. It is a spiritual war with the, 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 the lewdness and the, the immorality and um, you know, and, 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 and then also, you know, I, I was just looking at something that um, uh, Stephen Lawson posted about, uh, you know, people talking about how it's okay to uh, go to a, 
a transgender wedding or, or, uh, mm. uh, you know, yeah. and he, you know, so at the same time, there's a lot of truth being proclaimed, spoken of, mm. um, and, uh, that's a beautiful thing because we all need to be encouraged of that. And it's just a, a part of our lives now. So what's that, what's that scripture you guys where it's like, <clears throat> discipline punishes or obedience punishes something like that if it's like corinthians i think it is anybody anybody know what i'm talking about i mean there uh is it second corinthians 10 6 and our and we are ready to punish all this obedience whenever your obedience is fulfilled yes sir thank you that's it mark yes sir okay there's a war raging on that you know mm -hmm. and uh there's a war on truth and and we see that happen everywhere but also in social media and uh mm -hmm. the average person spends seven hours of day in front of this in front of a screen and seven hours a day <clears throat> leads to um one year of your life over a span of four years and over the span of your lifetime it's like 16 years of the average American's life is in front of a screen. Mm -hmm. So you think about what it is that we're putting in our eye, in our mind, in our soul, <clears throat> and the filth that's on social media. It's a beautiful thing when we we see uh, Second Corinthians being lived out, where the wickedness that's on there is also um, being filtered out by real truth. Mm -hmm. the, pro the proclamation of the gospel and, and men and women who uh, use that use that platform to proclaim the gospel. Marcia, our sister, she was actually on Instagram and her friend Elijah was there yesterday at the evening service. <clears throat> uh, Marcia said that she got saved on social media through direct message because she was Catholic. And this man that posted about the Lord, uh, Elijah, he um, was actually having a conversation with her and he evangelized to her through social media. And she said that she came to the Lord because this man spent time with her uh, proclaiming the gospel. They're just friends. And then she started coming to grace. And Elijah is like a youth minister or youth pastor. And he was there yesterday. But she has a wonderful story about her testimony, how through Instagram, um, he evangelized to her. You know, so that's just encouraging to hear and, and see how that platform is being used for God's glory. Wow, that's amazing. Is that the one of the social media that you know, there was some secular paper did like an investigation, and they, I guess, I mean, they started off with a, a profile that was maybe a little bit dark, but the the social media site just kind of pre kept on pushing, pushing in a darker, darker direction. You know? mm -hmm. Like such as what? Like such as what? I for, I for, I forget. It was something like was it something like maybe having a little interest in or somehow it you know started feeding them things about suicide and things like that and all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just kind of away off the you know. Yeah. Anxiety, depression. Yeah. Um, I think it was ten years ago. Uh, the DSM the DSM five um, report stated that the attention span of the average person on an American was uh, fourteen minutes, and today wow. it's it's seven seconds. <laughs> you know, um, and if you're on like YouTube or Instagram or any of these like digital platforms, you will notice that people have a screen and they they want to convey something and talk about a subject. But then above the screen, they have like a video, another video, like someone playing video games or something like that. Um, maybe like a dog, you know, just a cute puppy. So there's two videos happening at the same time, unrelated to each other. And they're stacked mm -hmm. on top of each other. And that's because the attention span of someone is, is so short that they need stimulation wow. because they have a, a ADD. So they have two things happening at the same time. So they can hear the person's voice speaking, but they're actually watching, you know, this person who's screaming on a roller coaster or like someone playing a video game. Um, yeah. And, and, and wow. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Interesting. There's a, um, a documentary that came out several years ago. 
it's on Netflix or something. And I can't remember. It has something related to social media, how Facebook um, has an algorithm that it puts all the different ads and all the different content. And the whole goal is to make sure that you are captivated for a while on that screen. Mm. So they said that, I guess that it, in your mind, it releases, your mind releases do dopamine. So it's like an, it, it becomes an addiction. Mm. And it's, mm. I think they said that, um, I, I think it was back when, I guess before Trump became an office that um, Facebook influenced some of the political outcomes in some of the South American countries. Hmm. So, wouldn't be surprised. It, it's a war on truth. Yep, it keeps feeding you misinformation, mis on mis mis misinformation. That's what that whole thing when, when um, was it Hillary Clinton was running for office? There was this something came out about the Democrats and they were sacrificing babies and stuff like that. And, and this one guy actually came and I guess broke into the democratic um, office in Washington or somewhere on the East coast. And he was um, going to trying to uh, kill some of the Democrat or some certain democratic leaders. Cause they, he actually believed that they were sacrificing baby babies to the devil and that's because this algorithm was feeding him that information you never heard that mm -hmm. oh. yeah it's it was very possible that's for sure mm. it does have a strong influence on people and mo it can be a motivator as well as a, a demotivator <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah it, it pains me because, you know, we're so quick to jump on something that's uh, snappy or um, a catchphrase, you know, um, and I see a lot of friends who, who and, I'm, and I'm not exempt to that. I mean, we all obviously mm -hmm. something that, that resonates with us, but even false teachers, you know, I, I see a lot of friends close to Mike Todd, um, oh gosh, um, Stephen Furtick, uh, you know, Joel Osteen, a lot of prophetic teachers who call themselves apostles, you know? Um, right. And so, yeah, just sound doctrine is just, you know, and that's, and that's what I was referring to too, Marcus, is that, that uh, verse we, you mentioned it, it's like Corinthians 10, 6, you're ready to punish every disobedience when your disobedience is, so, is complete. Mm, yeah. Because mm. Paul was, in a spiritual war with his co-workers of, for Christ against false mm -hmm. teachers in the Corinthian church. It's a war on truth. It is. So I want to take a second to take a pause and think right now, uh, at least for today, what would be most profitable? I mean, it's good once in a while. We just talk about different things. Like, do y'all want to keep talking about this? Or would it encourage you more to, to study a bit of Mark? And they're not saying you're... Do I choose the bio bar? Choose something else. That it's not that way. It's just <laughs> yeah. so we're we're bringing the Bible to bear on these issues, and even as we're starting our YouTube channel, right? Just yeah. Maybe we could talk about if that would be profitable. What should it look like moving forward? Uh, and what what are we trying to accomplish? I wouldn't mind getting a running start on Mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that then. Yeah, especially since Mark is here. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, last week you were preparing for your 